All right. Apparently, we are live one minute late. Well, still not saying we're live on YouTube yet. What the fuck? This, this shit says we are, though. All right, let's do something different. How's everybody doing? All right, cool. We are live. Sweet. Fuck yeah. How are y'all doing? Welcome to Sir Hunt's Reviews. The stream will officially begin in a few minutes. We're going to give some people some time to get here. Uh, I don't really... What does this do? Okay, that's weird. Not really used to that. Um, <laughs> Alright, so yeah. Uh, yeah. We got, we, got some, we got some things to discuss in this video. We will be discussing the events of House of the Dragon. The beginning. We're going to be starting from the... The beginning in the Great Council, 101 AC. And then we're going to discuss how the Greens and the Blacks were established and what events, if we have time, what events led up to it. But if not, we'll, we'll finish that, the events being led up to the Greens versus the Blacks and the actual start of the war in the next live stream at Wednesday. Next Wednesday at 420. That'll be Wednesday, uh, 420. That'll be Wednesday the 16th. Um, but yeah. We'll be beginning shortly. Talks amongst yourselves in the chat. I will be announcing the winner of my Daenerys sketch, and I'll also be selecting a winner for a house 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 for a house Targaryen sigil during the live stream. Live, live. Uh, it's a digital copy, of course. All you'll have to do is make sure you're subscribed, like this video, and uh, it'll be picked live. So you can't really comment if you're watching this after the fact. But don't worry, many more to come. Um, and every single member of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash or hunt reviews actually gets digital copies of my drawings every month. Uh, but yeah, we will be starting shortly. Go ahead and spark up those motherfucking cigars. Alright, alright, cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's, let's do this! What the fuck is up, everybody? Welcome, well, that's pretty overexposed. Let me lower that brightness a little bit. Uh, welcome to Sir Hunt's Reviews. My name's Mark, and in this video, in this live stream, rather, we are going to be discussing the build-up to the Greens versus the Blacks. I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about the Great Council of 101 AC, and I also wanna discuss how the Greens... Whoa, whoa. Whoops. <laughs> uh, how the Greens and the Blacks was established. Uh, let me double check to make sure everything's working. Um, let's see. All right, cool, cool, we got that. Clearly the audio is working. Uh, let me know if it's too loud, I'll turn it down a bit. Um, oh yeah, that's the winner right there. Shit, I didn't even realize it. The winner is <laughs> Black Winter Gaming. Um, yeah, message me uh, if at some point if you're watching this live or leave a comment down below or message me over on Twitter, it's sir underscore hunts underscore reviews. You can see right there to the right of me. Uh, but yeah, you are the winner of the digital copy of the Daenerys sketch that I did pictured right there. So yeah, make sure you message me to pick that up, playboy. Um, and this is the House Targaryen sigil drawing that I'll be giving away during the live stream. Um, yeah, at some point. Um, all right, so we will start off with, let's see, I got my fucking notes over here. Uh, shit, where's that at? Oh, yeah, I wanted to do one thing real quick. Let me do this. This won't, won't take that long at all. Um, I, uh, wait, let me double check. Sorry about that. Don't worry, the next one will be running smoothly. All right, cool. I just made that live, and then let me share this in the chat. 
I did a video the other day on uh, Joe Rogan, um, and I deleted it because I pussed out because I lost like 100 subs, which in my opinion, it's understandable. I lost 100 subs in like a few hours. But anyway, I decided to re-upload it, um, and it's live now. So I'm going to tweet it in the chat. Tweet it in the chat. I'm going <laughs> to link it in the chat. Um, all right, so yeah, go check that out if you want to watch, if you are a fan of Joe Rogan. Um, all right, cool. So let's, let's fucking start. Let's start. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Where the fuck are you, notes? All right, here we go. Okay, so... Like I said, we're going to start off with explaining what happened during the uh, Great Council 101 AC. And these notes are directly lifted from, uh, it's, it's, you type in a Song of Ice and Fire Wikipedia. It's the uh, Wikipedia page explaining the greens versus the blacks. But I've discussed that several times in these videos. All right, so in 101 AC, when King Jaehaerys the I Targaryen, uh, Prince Aemon, his, sorry, let me start off. When King Jaehaerys I died, uh, when King Jaehaerys I's son, his heir, died, uh, Prince Aemon in 92 AC, Jaehaerys chose Aemon's younger brother, Prince Balon, as his heir, passing over Aemon's daughter. Uh, Aemon, obviously, the line of succession with it going to him, um, it doesn't just, after, normally, it doesn't just like, go to whoever Jaehaerys' next eldest sibling, or, sorry, next eldest son or daughter is. It, it usually stays with that line of whoever that firstborn is, and it goes to their children. Um, so it would have technically gone to Prince Aemon's eldest daughter, but uh, that, that being Princess Rhaenys, and she's going to be playing, if I'm not mistaken, she'll be playing a role in this new series as, like, the queen who never was. She'll be, like, an aged Targaryen. She's a badass warrior queen who never was <laughs> um but yeah so so after prince Aemon, king jaehaerys the old wise king uh after his heir died he decided to go with uh Aemon's younger brother prince balon so his younger son basically king jaehaerys's younger son prince balon as his heir um and then of course skipping over princess rainier's um or sorry rainies god damn george with these fucking names uh prince balon ended up dying in 101 AC, who was supposed to be, you know, next in line. Um, and I should mention that the decision that King Jaehaerys made to skip over uh, Queen Rhaenys, or I guess Princess Rhaenys, caused a, a, a quarrel between King Jaehaerys and Queen Alysanne. Um Queen Alysanne thought that it should go to Prince Aemon's daughter, um, and King Jaehaerys decided that, no, it should go to his next son in line, Prince Balon. So he dies in 101 AC while serving as the actual hand of the king, who we all know is, like, basically running the kingdom for the king, while if you're King Robert, you're fucking and drinking. <laughs> uh, let me make sure there's no audio issues or anything. I haven't looked in the chat. All right. Okay, cool, cool. Um. Let me know if you guys have any audio issues or anything. So, so once the next in line, the new next in line, Prince Balon, dies in 101 AC um, while he's the hand of the king, Jaehaerys, of course, again, needs a new motherfucker to be first run up in line for the Iron Throne. Um, and the supporters of both Prince Viserys Targaryen, the eldest son of Prince Balon and his sister wife, Princess Alyssa, and Laenor Valerion, the son of Princess Rhaenys, reportedly formed armies. The uh, King Jaehaerys summoned from the Citadel his only surviving son, Archmaester Vagon. Very <laughs> clever with the name there again. Um, whether Jaehaerys offered him the throne or only wanted advice is unknown. So basically, when King Jaehaerys uh, has, you know, Princess Alyssa and Prince Balon and Laenor Valerion forming these armies, uh, King Jaehaerys decides to have his eldest, his, his only surviving son, rather, Archmaester Vagon, come down um, to King's Landing. And, and, and it doesn't, it's not really 
known whether he was saying, yo, man, you can be the next in line for the Iron Throne. Let's just squash this right here. Or if he just needed advice from him. It was probably a combination of both. King Jaehaerys lived a long time, if I'm not mistaken. He ruled for like 50 years or some shit. He was, it's crazy. I think not really based on uh, Ramses the Great, but the idea of the long-reigning king and outreigning a lot of his kids, like outliving them, um, that's supposed to be, like, in my opinion, inspired from Ramses the Great, who was like 94 or some shit when he died. Um, uh, all right. Um, okay, so getting back on track here. Uh, once King Jaehaerys summons Archmaester Vagon, you know, asking him for advice or potentially even offering the throne, Vagon gives him the idea that maybe the maesters, the lords, and the faith should all have a great council and discuss, uh, the best candidates for the next in line for a succession after King Jaehaerys, the old king, dies. Uh, Jaehaerys, of course, agrees to this, um, and he said, you know what? I'm going to leave this up to y'all motherfuckers, and I'll accept whatever decisions you guys come up with. Whatever, whatever, whoever you decide will sit the Iron Throne, we're going to, or I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to keep my hands out of it, basically. Um, and it should be known that prior to the start of the Great Council, um, why the fuck is my mouse not working? That is the craziest shit. Okay, now it's working. Uh... Prior to the start of the Great Council, there were some rumors going around that the that the Sea Lord, Lord Corlys, Corlys Valerion, um, was readying a fleet to defend Laenor. So basically, he was choosing sides, and uh, Corlys will be a character as well in the um, House of the Dragon series. Um, and at this time, Prince Daemon Targaryen gathered a small army of sworn swords and men-at-arms in case fighting broke out. And so this goes on to state that as the first great council, um, as it was the first great council ever, no one really knew how many people were going to be in attendance. Basically, this was like the first time that we've ever had a massive council drawn with leaders and maesters and in the faith, uh, rulers of the faith from all over the kingdoms are going to come together. So they didn't really know how many people would be in attendance. Um, the crown wanted room for at least 500 lords and entourages, and so did the um, great castle of... Wait. Sorry. <laughs> the crown, uh, King Jaehaerys was like, yo, there'll be at least 500 people here, so we're going to choose to have this at the great castle of Farron Hall. Uh, we're going to host it there. Um, and supposedly more than 1,000 lords came from throughout all of Westeros. It took them like a half a year to all come together at uh, Heron Hall. Some didn't really get there until like the, the shit was ending, um, which shows you like how long and how far some of these people had to travel. Um, the nearby town of Harrington was briefly the fourth largest settlement of the realm behind King's Landing, Old Town, and Lannisport. So it basically having the Great Council of 101 AC in Heron Hall cause so many people to show up because it's not just the lords they obviously have parties that they travel with it caused heron what the fuck is it called the town harrington clever <laughs> creative oh um, to to like overwhell with population and swell and in and, and like king's landing we know has something like two million people according to the tv show and old town has a lot in the books and so does lansport so the fact that heron hall was so heavily populated shows you how fucking massive this great council is. And the reason why I'm spending so much time on it is because I feel like this would be a great opening moment for the show. Maybe we have this this like flashbacks to it throughout the first couple episodes or something. And those flashbacks are just characters who were there remembering parts of, you know, we get like a full story, I guess. Um, but yeah, if they do decide to do that, it'll be pretty fucking massive. It'll probably use... As many extras as that scene with Daenerys giving the speech in season eight, if not more. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to, in this first season at least, in House of the Dragon, have a lot of callbacks to Game of Thrones, the final season, the first season, um, according to some of the leaks that I've been discussing in many of my videos over the past few weeks and months. Uh, they do go all out in the budget and all that shit, but I feel like it would be a good opportunity to have several moments where there's uh 
very s- scenes that are very reminiscent of Game of Thrones. And one of them, if they are doing this, maybe they could have with the Great Council a sort of gloomy setting. And we know Heron Hall has been melted, so the uh, symbolism of King's Landing being destroyed by Daenerys is fucking there at Heron Hall. Um, Heron Hall got destroyed initially when Aegon the Conqueror came and conquered Westeros to take over the Seven Kingdoms. Heron the Black, I think. I don't fucking know. One of the guys who Heron Hall's named after was like, nah, bro, I ain't coming up out my castle. So, of course, Aegon jumped on his dragon, Valerion the Black Dread, and roasted that motherfucker a lot. And we see the, the ruins of Heron Hall in uh, Season 3 where Arya is being a cupbearer to Tywin. But I feel like it would be an amazing callback to have not just one Targaryen, but an entire council of Targaryens and other motherfuckers, but mainly the Targaryens, uh, standing in the ruins of Heron Hall. And, and standing over this, this like massive gathering of people, I think it'd be pretty cool. Um, but instead of about to lose power, they're about to like re-establish control of it. You know what I mean? Discussing the lineage, everyone's a Targaryen. Uh, let's see, where were we? Um, let's see. So, so just sort of speeding things along here. Um, uh, let's see. I wanted to, I wanted to switch up. The uh, what you call it a little bit. Let me let me look in the chat. I don't need to be ignoring that. Oh shit! We got a super chat from DL Southwell. Uh, it's five dollars, and he says thank all the thanks for all the info. No doubt, man. This is fucking fun. I haven't done this in a while, so it's exciting for me. And I'm I'll be working through the glitches. Like I said, the more I start doing this again, the more I'll become comfortable with it. Uh, but yeah, thanks for that super chat. That's awesome. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, okay. So, what the fuck? Um, alright. Basically, at the 101, uh, Great Council, that's what the fuck I was trying to get to. I don't know where the hell that went. Hang on, give me a second. All right. Um, okay, so after, uh, like, that massive crowd is gathered, the assembly considered, um, like, everyone who, I guess, made an offer for the Iron Throne, everyone who sort of made their claim, the Great Council considered and decided to, like, dismiss the, the, the lesser... Uh, competitors and it says that as the deliberation took place two claimants became the front runners to win the election these two final candidates were prince viserys and lanor valerion a prince viserys is obviously king viserys the first who ends up you know ascending to the iron throne becomes a fat old jolly bastard and basically is known for throwing lavish parties uh, I guess I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself there. We'll talk about King Viserys in a second. Um, but according to Premia Geniature, Laner would uh, technically should have had the title of the Prince of Dragonstone. This being because his mother, Princess Rhaenys, was the daughter of Prince Aemon, who was the original heir to King Jaehaerys I. Um... But uh, since Viserys was apparently closer um, and he was like the last Targaryen, well, they didn't know he was going to be the last Targaryen, but he rolled Balerion. Um, he, he just was in a better position at the time to be named the Prince of Dragonstone, even though technically it should have passed to Laner, the, the son of uh, Princess Rhaenys, who was passed over initially because... Her father, King Aemon, had died, and Jaehaerys had decided that. So basically, the council ended up ruling in favor of what King Jaehaerys had initially said. Um, um, it, it should be noted that Lanor did get his own dragon, Sea Smoke. 
Um, the age of the claimants were also brought up during the discussions. Prince Viserys was a man of 24 who had already fathered a daughter who could follow him on the Iron Throne after he died. And Laner was like seven years old and a little man boy, so he wasn't really ready to rule anyway. Um, Laner had one big advantage uh, over Viserys, though, with him being like the Lord, the son of the Sea Snake, Lord Chorus Valerion, who was at the time basically Tywin Lannister. He was the richest man in all the Seven Kingdoms. That was like a massive advantage. Um, but apparently Corliss's fame, reputation, and wealth did mu didn't do much to support Laner's claim. Um, in the end, what mattered most for most of the lords in the realm was that the male line would take precedence over the female line, and the supporters of Laner were too f few. Like, basically, didn't have enough dicks in his family. Uh, while the maesters never revealed the actual numbers, it was rumored that Prince Viserys had won by a vote of 20 to 1. Um, Prince Viserys was ultimately chosen by the assembled nobility, and while he was not present for the final deliberations, King Jaehaerys I named Viserys the new Prince of Dragonstone. Um, and then it's noted that Sir Otto Hightower, the younger brother of Lord Old Town, Lord Old Town, the Lord of Old Town, uh, he's actually Queen Alysanne's father, and Queen Alysanne eventually marries Viserys I. Um, but he was chosen to be uh, Hand of the King since Prince Balon, who was chosen before uh, King Jaehaerys' younger son, who ended up dying. Uh, it, it was then established that Otto Hightower would be his Hand of the King. Um, and it's noted that according to Archmaester Gildalyn, um, in the many eyes of the council, basically everybody who was present at the council in 101 AC established an iron precedence on matters of succession. The Iron Throne could not pass to a woman or to a male descendant of a woman. Um, it stated that King Viserys I named his daughter, his only surviving heir, Princess Rhaenyra, and obviously this is where the start of the Greens versus the Blacks happens. So technically, if you're following law that was broken and then turn into, turned into the law, uh, the Greens have the rightful claim to the heir. But what, what Allison does is a real cunt move, and it sort of disestablishes uh, King... King Aegon II's claim, her son. Um, and I am jumping a little bit. I'm going to discuss the prominent members of the Greens and the prominent members of the Blacks as well as give like a brief description to each of them. But uh, it should be noted that literally everybody was wrong. And the only way to really fix this thing was by taking after Viserys dies to prevent this whole war, which is the death of most of the dragons. Um, you could have just married Rhaenyra and Aegon. You literally could have just done that. You could have united the House Targaryens. I was about to say the Houses of Green and Black, which they're both Targaryens. A dragon is still a dragon, no matter of its color. Um, but it really would have solved all of this shit. So just jumping a little bit ahead to like the establishment of the Greens versus the Blacks um, and giving you a little bit more about King Viserys, I guess, before we do that. Um, so King Viserys Targaryen, you know, the fat guy who was chosen at that great council, um, was the fifth Targaryen king to sit the Iron Throne. He ruled from 103 AC to 129 AC, which 129 AC is the start of the Dance of the Dragons. Um, he came into his own after the old King Jaehaerys I died in 103, two years after that great council, and Viserys continued the prosperous peace and legacy of his grandpappy, the, the wise king, Jaehaerys I. Um, the, the, like, the things that led up to the Civil War, the Targaryen Civil War known as the Dance of the Dragons, the seeds of it were planted earlier than Viserys' uh, reign, but him not, him choosing Rhaenyra, which he knew was like breaking the law and not holding a great council about it and saying, look, I'm going to die. This is the, this is the heir that I chose, regardless of what the fuck my granddad just, just did. I'm going to go back on that. He never really did that. He just figured that 
it would be taken care of upon his death. I guess he didn't realize, and this is something that the show's going to focus on, that Alicent is a tricky little bitch. Um, although, you know, the actual Greens versus the Blacks was established at the fifth year wedding anniversary, and I'm jumping ahead again to <laughs> Queen Alicent and Viserys, and the fact that Alicent wore a green gown and Rhaenyra wore a black and red gown, traditional House Targaryen colors, and then after that point, everybody started calling them the Greens and the Blacks or the Queen's Party and the Princess's Party. He should have known, like, there's this fucking riff in my kingdom, bro. I should do some shit about it. But nah, his fat ass just wanted to drink and just wanted to be merry and throw these lavish parties. But anyway, um, it should be noted that King Viserys I was a dragon rider who rode Balerion until Balerion died at the old age during uh, Jaehaerys' reign. So... This was before Viserys became king. I don't know if we'll get to see Balerion in this show because of that, but if they're doing flashbacks to the Great Council of 101 AC, maybe we'll get to see a younger Viserys who will be played by an actor who's obviously replaced if they do like a time jump or something, or maybe if they're doing a flashback um, and the actual show starts with the Council of Greens versus Blacks. Who fucking knows? But when they're doing this, it would be cool to see Viserys, a young Targaryen, riding on the back of the biggest dragon ever. A young male Targaryen who's not, I guess, the third Viserys. I asked, uh, I asked Aziz from History of Westeros if Viserys was the second or third, Daenerys' brother Viserys. And I can't remember what he said. I think he said the third because there was a, technically another Viserys after this Viserys the first, the one who started the Dance of the Dragons, um, who never came to power. So I guess he, the Viserys in the show is the third one. But it would be cool to see another king named Viserys, who's not a fucking cunt, who doesn't hit the nares, who's not a douchebag, um, riding on the the biggest dragon ever. Even though Balerion will be old, it'll be cool to be able to see an aged dragon. Um, a lot of shit happens with Balerion, like, for instance, conquering Westeros, for instance, flying off with Arya Targaryen and having, like, a seven-foot-long gash on the side of him that was caused by something that was crazy and it was during Balerion's prime and nothing could really wound a dragon. That was in the known world, at least. Um, and a lot of people think he flew to a, a shy. And what happened to Arya having, like, fireworms with the faces of men in them? Uh, it's basically hinting at the fact that Targaryens, or Valyrians, rather, would take... To, would take fireworms and, and, I guess, impregnate Valyrian women with them. They would have, like, a weird symbiotic relationship, and then maybe the offspring of that child would be able to control dragons. Maybe that's what happens with the Valyrians. Um, they implanted themselves with these fireworms. The fireworms took a hold of them, and they made it and had children before the fireworms destroyed them, but those children could control dragons because it was born with the blood of fire dragon i don't fucking know something like that uh but anyway it would be cool to see viserys riding on balerion uh, but it's noted that viserys was a peaceful dude which is probably why he never wanted to like completely say look i even though i chose rainier and that's not what is law i want it to be law now if my granddad can change the law by calling a great council maybe i can do the same thing but he never does that um he was described as being amiable, open-minded, and eager to please. Uh, basically, he was a cuck. Though Viserys was never considered strong-willed, he was not pliable or indecisive either. So he could make a decision, and once he made that decision, he fucking stuck to it. Rhaenyra being his heir. Um, and I'll state, uh, just like jumping ahead, but the main reason why Rhaenyra was chosen as his heir because the children that he had with Rhaenyra's mother, whose name is slipping me right now, um... They all died. Uh, the male heirs, they died. Rhaenyra grew up at his side, like basically taking part in meetings. There's pictures of her sitting on the steps of the Iron Throne while he's like holding court. She was raised to be next in line. So it kind of makes the most sense for her to rule. Um, King Aegon II was not raised to rule, on the other hand. Uh, but it's noted that Viserys' generosity was legendary, and that the Red Keep became a place of song and splendor during his reign, and King Viserys hosted countless balls, feasts, and tournaments, and uh, it was known that there was, that he was well-loved by lords and the small folk alike. 
um, when he was about halfway through his life. Uh, Viserys's fatness or stoutness, as George writes, uh, caused him to have a bunch of health issues, and this is what actually leads to his early demise. He got gout, uh, back pain, aching joints, respiratory issues, probably like, um, if I had to guess, what's that disease where you like swallow your tongue um, while you're sleeping? Probably some shit like that. I can't remember. it. It's what killed Patrice O'Neill, though. Um, and he was loved by, wait, what the fuck? Going back, sorry. Um, and it's noted that he was so stout that his girth nearly kept him from mounting the steps to the Iron Throne, which is pretty funny. Uh, Viserys sported a bushy, silvery gold mustache and wore the crown of his grandfather, Jaehaerys I. So in his use, um, or sorry, didn't mean to do that. So in his early reign, um, he inherited a secure throne, a full treasury, and a legacy of goodwill from his grandfather. Basically, Jaehaerys set him up perfectly to rule, which is part of the reason why he likely was so amiable and party. He never had any issues growing up, and, and Jaehaerys left it so perfect for him. He wasn't given any strife or really challenged to take the role. So when he filled in for the king, or when he became the king, he was just like, hey, man, just relax. Just take it easy. Let's have a party, you know? He didn't really have any issues because, like I said, it, it, his goodwill, the goodwill of all the good shit that his grandfather did, Jaehaerys, who's the greatest Targaryen king of ev of all time, uh, everything that he did set him up perfectly in his reign. So this is part of the reason why he was such a happy-go-lucky fucking dude. He didn't have any struggle or strife, and that's part of the downfall of House Targaryen. Is we're having this guy who has everything set up for him. It's like there's no son of a great man that did great things. His dad was doing great shit his whole life, so he made it so that his son didn't have to have that same struggle and strife that he did growing up. Um, and what that does is turn you into a lesser person. Like, everyone needs, you need conflict and you need to struggle. You need to feel like the good shit means something. If you don't know that the good shit means something, then you're just used to it and you become this, like, uh, party guy, you know? Um, but, uh... Um, I've already done a video on Mushroom, and I could talk about Mushroom a little bit, but I did a video with Gray Area. Um, it's not linked down below in the description, but you can go and watch it after we uh, finish up here. So, after uh, King Viserys comes into power, he may marries Ama Aaron, who is a Targaryen through, I believe it is her mother's side? Yes, her mother was Daella Targaryen who uh, was the daughter of King Jaehaerys and Queen Alysanne. Um, so, Aemo was his cousin, I think? I don't fucking know. But either way, th them both having such strong Valyrian ancestry and such strong close Valyrian ancestry, being from House Targaryen, um, the same direct lineage, their children, aside from Rhaenyra, died during childbirth. Um, and because of this, uh, it, it's obviously not healthy. Um, and then Ama ends up dying during childbirth, um, I believe in 105 AC, uh, at King's Landing. And she basically dies giving childbirth to... I, I can't, I don't, I don't have that part brought up. But basically, King Viserys' first wife, Rhaenyra's mother, Aima Arryn, who is a Targaryen, um, which means that House Arryn has Targaryen lineage. Most of the houses, you'll find out when you read Fire and Blood, have Targaryen lineage. So it's not that big of a fucking deal um, when people say, oh, such and such is a secret Targaryen. Everybody is, man. The king was fucking everybody. They all, they all have targaryen ancestry and then some of them the first men may actually have some as well because there's a lot of people that think um that ancient valyrians came over to westeros and, and like did some shit with the first men and i don't know there's there's a who cares anyway anyway getting back on track here after Ama, um rhaenyra's mother dies uh king viserys marries alicent targaryen and she gives him many uh, children um, and that brings me to 
What the fuck? Oh man, did that really just happen right now? The, the, they're talking about the wedding. Okay, so um, Alicent ends up marrying King Viserys the first. Um, and she she should be a part of the flashbacks because she was actually, if I'm not mistaken, she was with Jaehaerys when he died. No, that's not true. Wait, ah, I don't know. Um, so it's it's just giving you a little bit of back history on Alicent. It's it's described that she was precocious at 15. And I'll just give you a little bit of heads up. According to Mushroom, uh, Daemon Targaryen, Prince Daemon Targaryen, who later rides for House Black and marries Rhaenyra, um, he's going to be like the main bad boy of this series, like a little bit of Jaime Lannister, but also a little bit of like a good version of Viserys. I don't know. Um, there's also a little bit of Jon Snow in there with a little bit of Euron, the show version of Euron. Um, but yeah, he ends up taking her maidenhood, which could lead to a little bit of, like, animosity um, towards Rhaenyra and Alicent because Rhaenyra is, like, Daemon's favorite. Daemon knows that Rhaenyra is the next in line for the Iron Throne, and Prince Daemon wanted to be uh, the Prince of Dragonstone, but Viserys obviously was like, nah, bro, you're, you're fucking crazy, you need to chill out. Um, you're doing all this shit, you won't even spend time with your wife, you're going out and conquering the Stepstones, you're a wild guy. Um... I'm not going to name you Prince of Dragonstone. So to combat that, Prince Daemon gets really close with Rhaenyra and like does certain things like bring her bring her gifts, spends a lot of time with her, tell her she's the most beautiful woman in the Seven Kingdoms. And he does all this because he wants to get close to her because she is, like I said, next in line for the Iron Throne. So if it's true what Mushroom said that Prince Daemon took Alicent's uh, maidenhood, then if someone did that, and you're around that person, you guys probably have, like, somewhat of a special relationship, then you see this person's giving attention to another person, that would obviously cause some sort of strife, which would cause a clon conflict of Alicent and Rhaenyra. Maybe Alicent, or sorry, maybe Rhaenyra is unaware that Alicent took, what had her maidenhead took by Prince Daemon, and Alicent is cruel to Rhaenyra because of this, and Rhaenyra is like, what the fuck, I don't even know why you're acting mean to me, bitch. Um... And that causes the strife. Maybe it's justified. Maybe Rhaenyra's actions and attitude towards Alicent are justified in that way because we find out that, you know, Alicent was a mean bitch toward Rhaenyra growing up because she knew that Rhaenyra was next in the line, which meant that all of the kids that she was having with Viserys are not next in the line, which, you know, put her position of power at stakes. Uh, her father is the hand of the king. You're going to see a very Tywin Cersei esque relationship with Alicent and Sir Otto Hightower being hand of the king. Um, and then Cersei sort of being married to a fat king. Although Alicent and Viserys' relationship is different, but there is so much similarities there. It's going to be pretty crazy. And I haven't checked the chat in a while, so let me check that. Um, shout out to everybody that is watching. Um, All right, so getting back on track. Um, I guess, where the fuck were we? I wish I could rewind it to remember where I was. God, it's so sidetracked. That's why I regret looking at the chat. Not that I regret it, but it makes me get sidetracked. Um, um, okay, so... Like I was mentioning, that could be... It'll be interesting to see on House of the Dragon if they play into that aspect of uh, the hate between Alicent and Rhaenyra. Um, but it should be noted that even though Aima died and was unable to give uh, Viserys a male heir, Alicent, that's not the case. She gave him several male heirs, one of those being Aegon II, who she actually pushes into power once Viserys dies. So the main point of this video and the main... Everything we've been working towards is how the Greens versus the Blacks was established. So in, I believe it was, let's see, they married in 106 AC. So in 111 AC, we have the actual five-year anniversary of King Viserys I 
and Queen Alicent. And at this tournament, um, it's noted that it's like uh, it's a pretty big, pretty big deal. Um, it's like I guess even more special because Prince Damon returns. Um, but basically, in 111 AC, a tourney is being held uh, to celebrate the five-year anniversary of King Viserys and Alicent. Um, Alicent ends up wearing, like I mentioned before, a green gown, and Queen Rhaenyra wears a black and red gown, traditional House Targaryen colors. And from that moment forward, House Targaryen was sort of split into these two factions. You have the Queen's Party, that's, um, at the time the leader, Queen Alicent Hightower, and all of her male heirs and female heirs, um, but basically the children of Viserys the first from his second marriage with Allison. And then you had the, the princess's party, or the blacks, and that was Queen Ra Princess Rhaenyra, um, Prince Daemon, and a few others. So uh, just, I guess, to list out a lot of the prominent greens and the prominent blacks, um, I've mentioned and give, given descriptions at this point of the, some of the more prominent ones but let's see for the greens we have king aegon the second targaryen um who eventually becomes king of the andals the royal Noir, the first man lord of the seven kingdoms protector of the royal realm world <laughs> shout out the red um uh, and he rode the dragon sunfire then you have his wife queen helena targaryen uh queen allison's daughter all of these people in marriages are all like allison's children basically uh, but she rode Dreamfire. And then you had Prince One-Eye, Aemon Targaryen, who was the Prince Regent and the Protector of the Realm, and he rode the dragon Vagar. Um, and then you have Daeron Targaryen, who rode... Prince Daeron Targaryen, who rode Tessarion. Prince Jaehaerys Targaryen, who bonded with Shrikos. And then Princess Jaehaerys Targaryen, who bonded with Morgul. And then last but not least, you have Prince Maelor Targaryen, who uh, basically just had a dragon egg. Um, and the higher ups, or the Green Council, if you will, was Alicent Hightower, Queen Alicent Hightower herself, her father, Otto Hightower, Sir Christian Cole, uh, Tylan Lannister, Jasper Wilde, Larry Strong, and Grandmaster Orwell. And then over on the Blacks, we have Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen, who we've talked briefly about in this video, in this live stream. Um, and she rode the dragon Syrax. Um, and then we also had Prince Daemon Targaryen, who rode Caraxes, Prince Jacaris Valerion, who rode Vermax, Prince Lucerys Valerion, who rode Arax, and these are all of Daenerys's, sorry, Daenerys's, you see where my head's at, these are all Rhaenyra's children that she has with, I believe, Laenor, um, and they're Valerions, but we know that House Valerion is a vassal of House Targaryen, so these, they're Targaryen, they're pretty much Targaryen, um, so like I said, Prince Jacarys Valerion, who rode Vermax, Prince Lucerys Valerion, who rode Arax, Prince Joffrey Valerion, who rode Taraxes, and then we have Prince Aegon Targaryen, who rode Stormcloud, and Prince Viserys Targaryen, who possessed one dragon egg. And then we also have Prince Princess Rhaenys, the queen who never was, who rode Maelys, um, and then we had... Baela Targaryen, who rode Moondancer, and Reyna Targaryen, who once again just had a dragon egg and then later ended up getting two more. And the higher-ups over on the Blacks, or the Council, if you will, is Queen Rhaenyra herself, Prince Daemon Targaryen, um, who was her uncle and later her husband, um, Lord Corlys Valerion at first, but then he later defects to the Greens, and we also have Princess Rhaenys, Prince Jacarys, Prince Lucerys and Prince Joffrey. Um, and those are the prominent members. And I think we are right around the point of where I want to wrap this up. Um, uh, so, with that being said, I want to once again give a shout out to. Um, let me see if I can't bring that back up. Black Winter Gaming for winning my contest of this Daenerys giveaway. Please leave me send leave me. Please send me a message over on Twitter. Leave a comment on this video or type in the chat and I'll send you the digital copy um, over there to over there wherever your email or however you want to receive it. Um, and then as far as the winner for the sorry for this 
um, which I've actually done a giveaway before, so I'll just, you know, do something as nice to give away during this live stream. But the winner of that is actually who you've been seeing with the mod status this whole time, Forrest Blurta. Uh, she has been, like, a long-time subscriber of mine, and it's about time she won something from this damn channel. So send me a message over on Twitter, and I will send you a digital copy of that House Targaryen sigil that I drew a few weeks back. I want to thank you all so so much for motherfucking watching if you could please slap a like on this video the like goal is going to be 420 um i will be announcing a new giveaway for a calendar of ice and fire in my next uh house of the dragon video which will be posted on i'm not really sure yet go follow me on twitter to make sure um you'll find out when that video drops but like i said i want to thank you all so so much for watching a super special shout out to every single uh, person on my Patreon family over on Patreon.com, and those individuals are, um, let's see, sorry, give me a second. Uh, all right, so super special thank you to Brick23, Bloody Tyrant, Leah Hendricks, and Nancy Toxteen, who actually bought me this chair right here, and the blankets that you see behind me, um... Marilyn Miller, Cater Tot, Joe Swag, Damon Mile, Rick Lacey, and Mel of Winterfell. Thank you all so, so much for watching. If you could please, like I said, slap a like on this video. My name's Mark, and this has been Serlance. Back to live streaming, motherfucker.